everyone. This is Heather. I usually do a Facebook Live every, um, it's because really bright, um, every week around this time on Friday. So I'm doing something different today. I'm actually just going to talk to you about what I've been learning um, as a podcaster for the last three months. And um, as of you know, you may not know, I've been doing as a guest for a podcast. It's August 2015. I really focus on being a guest on podcasting. Now, podcasting opens up the world to uh, blog talk radio. It opens the world to real radio. It opens up the world to um, summits, speaking gigs. So since August 2015, when I focused on how can I be a really good guest and add quality and add value to other people's shows, podcasts, uh, summits, uh, speaking gigs, it's really opened up the world to new speaking gigs. Like just last week uh, and yesterday, I just got invited to be here in Austin at the uh, Connect, in Te Connect Women in Technology event. So it's really opened me up. And so I wanted to share with you what I've learned um, the last couple of months of me owning my own show. So like I said, since August 2015, I focused first on being a guest, which is what I suggest everyone does. Because when you learn how to be a great guest, you learn um, these idiosyncrasies of the business. So it's like in TV. You wouldn't go create your own TV show first without learning first on how to be a great guest on TV or how to be a great actor on TV. And that's why a lot of actors then turned in producers, right? Because they understand the business. So this is what I suggest for all experts, no matter what your expertise is. It could be expertise on UFOs. It could be expertise on conspiracy theories. It could be expertise on marketing or business. Um, I really highly suggest you go become a great guest and being a phenomenal guest and learn the art and science and how to share your story, share your pitch, uh, sell yourself, but more importantly, how to be a great guest. And what's the difference between being a guest on podcasts, uh, radio, as well as like summits, it's usually a 30 to 45 minute interview style. And it's not like PR where you're on TV and it's like sound bites. You can't do sound bites. It's more of a story conversation. Let me share with you a story. And because it's only usually audio, you have to really share your story in such a way that people can visualize it. If they're listening in their car, if they're listening wherever they're listening, you want to make sure you share your story in such a visual as they, that they're there with you. Um, in that conversation, they actually visualize that story versus just giving bullet points. It's not a presentation. That's what's great about podcasting. Podcasting is not a presentation. It has presentation elements. You might be asked for tips, tricks, strategies, but it's not a, I'm going to give you a presentation of research. Okay. So I just want to share with you what I've learned. I mean, there's so much I've learned, but what I've learned in the last few months of owning my own podcast. And I uh, recently just signed on with a network. I've actually been involved with two networks the last couple months. Um, and one I've just really been focused on the last couple days, and that is Renegade Talk Radio. So I'm now part of their network. What does a network mean? Um, God, you know, being on a network, so let me explain to you in the radio world what networking is, from what I understand. And I'm, I'm a newbie here, so what I've been taught, here's what a network is. What a network is, is literally kind of like what it sounds like a network. It's a it's one show, it's like one one station, and you're on that station with other people. So it's basically what I call leveraging the group environment. So I'm on Renegade Talk Radio, and there's other shows on that network, and we cross-promote. Just like a TV station, like if you're on Fox News and Megyn Kelly is talking about Bill O'Reilly and Bill O'Reilly is talking about Megyn Kelly, they do some cross-promotion. Um, that's the beauty of being on a, on, a, on a network. It helps you, what I call, increase your listenership. When you increase your listenership, not only do you increase your listenership, you also can ask for more ad dollars and on and on it goes. For me, I'm looking at it. 100% from an exposure perspective, right? The more listeners I get, it's going to help me and my business and add value uh, to the world. I'm not necessarily trying to get the, I'm not trying to get sponsorships. A lot of people go that route. That's not how I look at it. I'm more of a direct response marketing person. And so at podcasting, how I view it is I want to connect with more people. And the more I can connect with more people, then I can get, um, I can ask them more questions and figure out what the market wants. So that's how I view podcasting. People ask me all the time, oh, are you making money? Let me be super clear with podcasting. No matter what you hear out there on the $2,000 products you hear, you're, it, podcasting 
is a front end product, meaning the whole point of podcasting is to get the back end. Okay, so another way to say it, it's a way to get opt-ins. I look at it as a direct response media front end, not a back end. Okay, and you got to think of it that way. Uh, if you try to make the podcasting itself profitable, that's more challenging. If you focus on using as a legion to go to the back end for whatever your products and services are, you're going to be way more profitable and ahead of the game. So that's what I'm learning too. And um, what's interesting about me owning my own show. Oh, am I live again? It says I was gone. The, the, what's good about me owning my own show is there is some credibility there, right? So like I own my own show and I actually have, uh, I am actually a guest on other people's show. So what's interesting about that, what I've learned the last couple months of owning my own show is a lot of work. I'm just going to be honest with you. It's a lot of work. I have a team of people. I have a social media person. She's amazing. I have someone who helps to put up the blog on the the, on the website and the show notes and the image, which is the social media person. Then I have someone edit it. Someone puts it up to lips and there's like all these mini pieces. And I'm the biggest believer of no one should start doing podcasting, which is the anti of what you hear. I am not a believer in that. I believe you should learn to be an amazing guest first and you learn the business that way. And uh, for me, as someone who is constantly looking for great guests, I would appreciate you to be a great guest because I've I've been in experiences. I've been on 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 a show, or actually, I've been uh, uh, on my show, and people come on and like it's pulling teeth. You ever had of that? Um, they're like pulling teeth. It's so hard for them to tell a story, or they talk in sound bites, and they don't know how to actually share their story in such a way that um, it's compelling. So with that said, I honestly encourage every single one of you to go out there. There's a, com there's a company called Interview Connections. They can help you get started. Um, there's another company called a Radio Guest Interview where you get on their list, all right, and you can learn how to be a guest from them. There's all kinds of ways. I'm coming out with a book on how to be a guest. Uh, Rob is helping me create that book. So look out for that. But I just wanted to share with you some things I'm learning the last couple of months with podcasting and that it's not for the faint of heart. You've got to have some consistency with it. It takes a team to put it together. Um, and you've got to learn to not only just be a great host and share your story inside the conversation. You also have to learn to what I call pull it out of the guest. Just because the guest is a great expert at something doesn't mean they're a great guest on podcast shows. Dave, I know you know that. Dave Bernstein. Hey, Dave, how are you? Um, so that's what I just wanted to share with you. In the last couple months, um, I've had a great time doing my show called The Win with Heather Havenwood. Um, it's been a ton of fun, but I honestly, if I had to, you know, I really love being a guest. It's so much more fun for me, but it's also less work. I get to show up and perform and add ton of value and I don't have to do all the editing and stuff like that in the background. So, um, anyway, I hope y'all have any questions, let me know, but I just kind of wanted to share with you as having my own show for the last, has it, how long has it been Angela? Three months? three months, three months, I think, um, owning my own show. And then, uh, now I'm focusing on, you know, being a great guest still and, um, uh, and leveraging my show, but I just got Mike Diller to finally say, yes, he's going to be on my show. The win. I had Larry Winget on my show. Y'all heard of him. He's that like badass guy who kind of tells you how it is. He's, um, he's, he's been on my show. He, it hasn't been launched yet, but I actually already, um, Interviewed him. Larry Wing, it's amazing. Mike Dillard's going to be on the show next week. And I've just had so many great guests. I just absolutely love it. Um, and yes, thank you, Angela. You can check out my podcast at heatherhavenwood.com forward slash the win. And anyway, I just want to share with you guys every single week. I try to give a tip or trick of what's happening in my business and what's happening um, in a real world sense, like what's really going on. And I just want to share if you have any questions about podcasting or how to be a great guest, that's my thing. You know, don't come to me like how to set it all up. I'm still kind of learning that process and there's people out there and, and systems out there that they teach you how to do that. What I'm going to be great at is teaching you how to be a great guest, how to share your story because it's a 45 minute interview. It's not a presentation. It's how do you share your expertise in such a way that it's not boring. It's not a presentation. It doesn't sound like sound bites and you're sharing your story in such a way that it's engaging. Um, 
and one of the, I'm going to look over here, let's see. Yeah, Michael Hogg, he has a book called Six Stage Plot Structure. Now, if you, if you learn the six stage plot structure, what's going to happen is, spoiler alert, every single movie in the world is going to be a spoiler alert for you because he actually breaks down a story and how it's structured. And every single movie, every successful movie out there literally follows it to a T. So that's the negative when you learn the art of storytelling. Every story, you know, is kind of going to happen. Um, but at the same time, um, it's a great way to learn the art of storytelling. And storytelling really is what podcasting is about. It's an entertainment uh, medium. And so the more you understand that it's entertainment medium, the better off you're going to be in the podcasting or radio world. And I, I, say, I say radio, podcasting, shows, summits, speaking. I really think that that's the entire medium there. So um, I'm excited. I just got the opportunity. I just said yes to here in Austin, going to be speaking hopefully in front of 300 women. Um, the Women in Technology, connecting with the Women in Technology here in Austin. I'm also speaking next week at the National Women Association local here in Austin. And those opportunities popped up literally because I was out there sharing my story and podcasting and someone heard something, right? And that's what I highly suggest you guys to do. Thank you, Angela. You can check out the show notes here at heatherhavenwood.com forward slash podcast show. And again, I'm very excited that I, um, I'm now part of the Renegade Talk Network. You can check them out on iTunes as well. And there's other shows inside of that. You'll see my show and then you'll see their shows. Or you can just check out my show privately on iTunes. And as of this week, I'm now on iHeart, TuneIn, iTunes, Stitcher. I think I'm missing one, I'm sure. But iHeart's new and TuneIn is one. TuneIn app is actually a new one for me as well. So I hope this was helpful for you. Have a great weekend and doing whatever you're doing in your life. And uh, I'll see you next week.